Hi, grade nines. I wanted to go through the week eight homework assignment. This is the last lesson in the unit five work. And as you probably saw in the outline, there will be a question like this on your test on Monday. So I'd strongly recommend that you watch this, go over your homework, email your teacher to check and see if you have any questions about how this was done, okay? So question number two said that tickets for this year's drama production cost $8 for adults and $6 for students. Last night's show earned $1,200. If 180 tickets were sold, how many of each type were sold? So when I'm going through this, we have really a lot of information. And when I'm looking at this, I want to figure out what different information would go together. So I know that I have some information here about money, this $1,200, and I know that it costs $8 for adults and $6 for students. And then I also have some information, so I've tried to color code it here for you, about how many tickets. So the first step to any of these types of questions is to define your variables. This is really important for math communication to tell what your X or your Y, or if you're using other letters like A for adults and S for students, what those letters are going to represent. So here I've said X is the number of adult tickets, Y is the number of student tickets. I always know what my variables will be because they are going to answer the question that's being asked. If it says how many of each type of tickets, then your variables need to be the number of different tickets of each type. So when you find your variables, you've answered the question that's being asked. The next piece here is making the equations. And this goes back to where I've kind of color coded up above and I will post a PDF of these solutions as well. So I know that I have different pieces of information. So I had information here about the 180 tickets, but I also had information about the money. So those two different types of information are going to be my two different equations. So here I've created one equation for how many tickets. And you can see I've color coded this like the, the colors that I've circled, the numbers in in the question. So the adult tickets plus the student tickets equal 180 tickets altogether. Then I've created another equation using money. So here, each adult ticket cost $8. So if you wanted to, the total amount of adult ticket money, you'd take $8 times the number of adult tickets. And then each student ticket, which was Y, cost $6. However many student tickets you sold, you'll multiply that by six, and that's an amount of money. If you add up the money from the adult tickets and the money from the student tickets, you get the total amount of money, that $1,200. Um, I did this one using slope y intercept form because I found that most people were pretty good with graphing using the x intercept and y intercept method, but um, more people were kind of struggling sometimes with the slope y intercept form. So that's how I chose to graph both of these. So I've rearranged the equation x plus y equals 180. Rearranges pretty easily. We just have to bring the x over and make it y equals negative x plus 180. So from here, I see that my slope is the coefficient of the x, and there's no number there, but just a negative sign. So I know that that's negative one over one. And the y-intercept is the number added or subtracted by itself, so the y-intercept is 180. So I'm going to have a slope of negative one and a y-intercept of 180. This equation takes a bit more rearranging. I want to get y by itself. That's the slope y-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. I'm going to bring the 8x over. So you see here I have 6y equals negative 8x plus 1200. And then to get y by itself, I divide by 6 in each term. So now I get y equals 8 over 6 reduces to 4 over 3, and that's still negative. And 1200 over 6 is 200. So now I have a slope of negative 4 over 3 and a y-intercept of 200 for this one. Um, so this is going to go down 4 and over 3. And the other equation, the other line is going to go down 1 and over 1. 
The next step is to set up my graph. Normally, we would have our graphs go in both directions, so we would show a negative and a positive scale for X and Y. And this was a big note that I put. Normally, we would have arrows on the end of our graphs showing that they go for forever. But in this case, you don't have a situation where the graphs could go into the negatives. Can you sell a negative number of tickets? No. Can you make a negative amount of money in, as your revenue for a play? No. So these are really just contained to the positive uh, X and Y. So I'm going to label here the axes. So this is the X axis is labeled here, which was the number of adults tickets and the Y axis labeled up here for the number of students. Now I know from my equations that I found, I had a Y intercept of 200. So I'm going to have to choose a scale that will go up to 200. So I decided to count by tens here, but you can see I find it gets pretty crowded if I had put 10, 20, 30, 40. So I'm skipping every other square and just putting those numbers counting by 20s, but making that two squares. Now, an important note when you're doing this on your test on Monday, if you do not have graph paper, please, please go back and watch the video about how to graph y equals mx plus b. In that video, I show an example of what to do if you don't have graph paper, how to darken the lines on some regular binder paper and turn it sideways to help you graph accurately. You will not get the right answer on these if you just estimate and kind of freehand draw a graph. So it's really important to make sure you're watching that video. Um, so my two lines, I'm just going to re-rate them up at the top here. So the second line was y equals negative 4 over 3x plus 200. So I had a slope of, make sure that's in your screen, I had a slope of negative 4 over 3 and a y-intercept of 200. The other one was y equals negative 1 over 1. You don't really need that there, but I think it makes it easier to see the slope plus 180. So if I graph the orange line first, remember that you're starting at the y-intercept and then you're using the slope for rise and run. So here, I start at a y-intercept of 180 and I'm counting rise over run. So I've counted the same scale in both directions. Now, if I counted down one, you see on this scale, one would be a tiny amount. But if you have a slope of negative 1 over 1, that's the same as negative 10 over 10. Um, or counting by 1 square and 1 square. So that's what I've done here. Because even though the scale is different, we, if it's the same, counting by 10s up and down and left and right, you can still count the number of squares for your slope. So I'm counting down 1 square and over 1 square and putting a dot. Now that's really all you need to draw a line, but I find that people tend to draw it a little bit off course if you don't do multiple points. So you can see I've kind of gone down one, over one, down one, over one, and put a bunch more dots there before I drew the line with my ruler. Another important um, thing here, if you do not have a ruler at home right now, that's fine, but make sure you're drawing a straight line. You should not be drawing this freehand. Find the edge of a uh, duotang. Find the edge of a cereal box from your cupboard. Find the edge of a book. Something straight that will help you draw a straight line. You will not get this accurate enough if you're just drawing it freehand. So I've done a bunch of points here just to help me, help me get a really nice clear line. And then I connected that line to draw in the orange line. The next equation y equals negative 4 over 3x plus 200. We're going to start up at the 200 and then go down 4 and over 3. So you can see I've drawn the purple line in here. We've got a uh, y-intercept at 200 and then I counted 1, 2, 3, 4 squares down and 1, 2, 3 squares over and put that dot. 
I would do that again, one, two, three, four squares down, and one, two, three over and put another dot. We can see already that that's going to be the point POI, but I did a couple more points, four down, three over, just to make sure I was graphing really accurately there. Now, we want to label the POI. So wherever those two lines cross, and you can see hopefully that it's really important here that you graph accurately with a ruler and with measuring out your squares, then we can label that with the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So it's 60 comma 120. Part E asks, what is the POI and what does it mean? So here I've got my POI is 60 and 120, which is an X and a Y value. And remember back from the very beginning, we said that X was the number of adult tickets and Y was the number of student tickets. So these things are both true. There's a total of 180 tickets and they made $1,200 when there is 60 adult tickets and 120 student tickets. So that POI answers the question. So therefore they sold 60 adult and 120 student tickets. The last step asks us to verify our solution algebraically. So here we want to put in this x equals 60, y equals 120, I'm going to put it into both equations and check that it equals the right hand side. So I'm going to sub in to my original two equations from part B, sub in x equals 60, y equals 120, and double check that it equals the right hand side. That's a good check um, to make sure that you've graphed accurately. If you got this was a little bit off, like maybe this was 1,100, that would be a sign that you probably did not graph your purple line as accurately as you needed to. So that would be a um, hint for you to go back and double check that work. So again, please make sure that you're correcting any problems that you had with this um, day nine homework on the outline and that you're ready to do this type of question for your test on Monday.